Hello, future RMTs. Welcome to our virtual classroom. And in today's lecture, what we're going to discuss is all about benzene and derivatives. Our learning outcomes are as follows. Name benzene and its derivatives. Discuss the physical and chemical properties of benzene and phenols. And predict the products of benzene and phenol reactions. Okay. To start with, we have here our aromatic hydro or aromatic hydrocarbons or aromatic compounds. If you still remember in our uh, previous discussions, we said that hydrocarbons is uh, classified generally into four. We have our alkenes, alkenes, and alkynes, which of which uh, the, the, the three, the first three uh, classifications men uh, mentioned or discussed are in forms of aliphatic or cyclic. No, they can be in form of aliphatic. When we said aliphatic, a long chain of carbons. And when we said cyclic, that is a ring for where in aromatic compounds such as this benzene, the simplest aromatic compound that we have, they are in cyclic form only. Okay? Remember that when we said aromatic compounds, they are in cyclic form only. So meaning to say, they are in ring form. Okay? So when we said aromatic compounds from the word itself, aromatic, no, uh, it has a aroma. No? But I want, you to, I want you to take note that this aromatic doesn't mean that all of these benzene derivatives, no, all of these arenes has a pleasant smell because they are also uh, aromatic compounds which no, has a unpleasant odor. In other words, we said that aromatic, which means they have an aroma. Okay? They are capable of producing aroma. Okay? Now, when we said aromatic compounds, that is a hydrocarbon that contains a one or more benzene-like ring. So as we go along, we are going to discuss the different uh, types of aromatic compounds. Okay? And arene is, take note that arene is a term used to describe aromatic hydrocarbons. In other words, this is the functional group and benzene is just an example of our arene. And I want you to take note that benzene is the simplest no? uh, arene or aromatic compound that we have. Now, we have here the three representations or graphical representations of our benzene, the simplest arene or the simplest aromatic compound that we could have. Now, in the year 1872, August Kekule no, uh, proposed the structure of our aromatic compounds. Okay? So this is just a uh, fish structure, no, condensed structure of our aromatic benzene, okay? uh, showing all atoms present in our uh, cyclic, no? in our benzene ring. Okay? This is the line angle structure. No? of our benzene and this is the ball and stick or shows the 3D dimensional structure of our uh, benzene. Now I want you to take note that this one is this one is synonymous with this one. Okay. They are just the same or this one. And they are just the same. Now in our, yeah, this one. Uh, this shows the, an alternative Lewis contributing structure for benzene. So they are just the same. Okay. Now how about for the nomenclature of our benzene and its derivatives? Now I want you to take note that monosubstituted alkyl benzenes are named as a derivative of benzene. Let's, for example, this one. Now this is our benzene. And this is ethyl, okay? Therefore, we will name it as ethyl benzene. This one, no, this is methyl, this is benzene. We can name it as methyl benzene, okay? This one is ethylene or ethyne, no? This is our ethyne benzene or ethylene benzene. However, I want you to take note that IUPAC retains the common names for several simpler monosubstituted alkyl benzene. So in this case, 
instead of saying methylbenzene, we can simply name it as fluid. And this is an acceptable IUPAC name for this organic compound. Okay, again, instead of saying methylbenzene, you can simply say it as your tulbin. Now, in this case, instead of saying ethylbenzene, no, this is this has a common name of styrene. Okay, so please take note of the common names of the monosubstituted alkyl benzene. They are considered the IUPAC name, and their common name is considered as the IUPAC name. Now, how about for this one? No, uh, this is phenol. No, this is anisole. This is aniline. This is benzaldehyde, and this is benzoic acid. Now, if you're going to discuss uh, the following, this one contains hydroxyl group as the functional group. No, phenol contains OH or hydroxyl group. No, and that is true with alcohol. They both phenols and alcohol contains hydroxyl group. This one is. ROR, this is an example of uh, ether. No, R, uh, C O C, that's an example of ether. So instead of saying that this is an ether, no, we can name it as a derivative of our benzene, no, and this is your anisole. So take note of the name. This one is amino benzene, no, because of this one, this is our amino. And instead of saying amino benzene, we can simply say it as aniline, okay? This one is considered as benzaldehyde, an aldehyde that contains a carbonyl group on the terminal carbon side. Okay, so we can name it as benzaldehyde. And this one, this is a carboxylic acid having a carboxyl group, carbon double bond O and OH. This is your benzoic acid. Now, I want you to take note the names of this, uh, the common names of this monosubstituted uh, benzene. Phenol, anisole, aniline, benzaldehyde, and benzoic acid. Now, in this case, phenyl group, no phenyl group, or C5, uh, C6H5, or PH, no, as we defined phenyl, uh, can be a substitute, a substituent group derived from the removal of the H, no, and uh, uh, from the benzene. Okay, so that is our phenyl. Example of this one. This is our phenyl, one phenyl cyclohexane. This is our cyclohexane, one cyclohexane or cyclohexane because of the double bond. Okay, so this is the double bond. So this is the carbon number one having the uh, the first or having the carbon double bond. No, and this is our uh, carbon number one where our phenyl group is attached. This one is four phenyl one betene. This is betene. No, this is betene. Okay, and uh, this is phenyl. Now, I want you to take note, no, uh, I have here, yeah, where is it? Uh, I'm sorry, sorry. I have to go here. Oh, where, where is it? Uh, this one. Hey, okay, please take note, guys, that in molecules containing other functional groups, phenyl groups are often named as substituents. I take note in molecules containing other functional groups, no, phenyl groups are often considered as substituent. Now, the, the same thing as this one, we have here alkene, no, phenyl is considered as a substituent or attached on our alkene. Okay. Now, how about if we have two uh, attachments or two substituents occur in our benzene? Okay. Uh, we are going to use the locators, no? the ortho, meta, and para. Now, when we said ortho, no, this one is an ortho-bromobenzoic acid, or we can say that this is our benzoic acid, right? This is our bromo uh, benzene. However, if we are going to discuss or if we are going to follow the rule of majority or the rule of priority, no? This is our priority because this is our uh, COOH and this is our functional group carboxylic acid. Again, this one is our uh, benzoic acid. Now, on carbon number two, we have here our bromo, and then we can name it as two bromo benzoic acid. 
However, since we have a locator's ortomethapara, instead of saying 2-bromobenzoic acid, we can say it as ortobromobenzoic acid. Now take note, okay? When we said ortho, it means that the location of our attachment is on carbon 1 and on carbon number 2. Now I want you to take note that ortho, no, the word ortho came from a Greek word which means straight, no? straight. So one, two, straight. Now how about this one? Uh, we can say that this is our uh, solvent, right? This is our solvent. However, we have here another metal group. It is acceptable to say that that is our 1,3-dimethylbenzene. One, two, three. It's acceptable. To say that is our dimethyl benzene. Okay? But instead of saying 1 3 dimethyl benzene, we can say it as metha dimethyl benzene. And when you said metha, it means that the substituent is located on carbon number one and carbon number three. Now take note, guys, that meta came from a Greek word which means after. So 1 3, which means after. Or Simply, we can say it, this is our M site or meta site. Now, in this case, we have here on carbon number one and on carbon number four. Okay? This is our one chloro, four ethyl benzene, or simply our para chloro ethyl benzene, which means you know, para came from a Greek word, uh, uh, which means beyond. Okay? And when we said para, that is on location number one and carbon number four. Now, I want you to take note why we name it one for chloro and four for ethyl. Again, remember, we have to arrange our substituents you know, to alphabetical order and giving them the lowest possible number. Okay? So we will start here in chloro. To give us four, a one chloro, four ethyl benzene, or simply that is our chloro or para chloro ethyl benzene. Now, how about if we have three or more substituents? Okay, three or more substituents. How are we going to name it? Now, take note of this. If one of the substituents imparts the special name, then name the molecule as the derivative of the parent. Okay. Now, in this case, we have here. Uh, CH3 and O2 Cl. No, Cl, uh, chlorobenzene is not a common name. It's not, it's, that is not a special name. We have here CH3. Now this one is solvent. Amino uh, benzene is not also a special name. No? But since we have here solvent, as our special name, we will name it this organic compound as our as our parent name. Okay. Now this will be our four chloro two nitrobenzene. Now you will wonder why four chloro two nitrobenzene. Okay. Uh, two nitro solvent. So why four chloro? You said that we have to arrange it into an alphabetical order. Yes, you are correct. But since this is our parent, no, this is our parent uh, uh, benzene. Now this is our uh, point of origin okay, because there is this is our parent. So one, two, three, and. Now we can, you can start here to one, you can say this is two, you can say this is three, you can say this is four, because this is our point of origin. So therefore, we can say it as four chloro two nitrosolvin. Now, wait, I have to go back here. I remember, take note that ortho, meta, and para can only be used in benzene. Okay? Because let's say, for example, we have this one. 
you cannot say that this is our meta dichlorocyclohexane. That is incorrect because you can only use ortho meta para for benzene. But instead of saying instead of saying meta dichlorocyclohexane, this is simply your one three dichloro uh, cyclo Okay. Using meta ortho or para in cyclohexane is not appropriate. Okay, so please take note on that. So going back again, if one of the substituents impart a common name, name or a special name, name the molecule as a derivative of that parent. So sabihin, this one is just a attachment. Okay, now how about this one? This is our special name, no special benzene or special uh, that imparts the special name. This one. This is our phenol. No? And the rest is just an attachment. Okay? So if we start here, one, two, three, four, five, six, we have two per six. If we start uh, going uh, counterclockwise, one, two, three, four, five, and six. At the end of the day, we will arrive with the same number. Two per six, try bromo. Now let's say for example, if none of the substituent to be uh, if none of the substituent imparts a special name, what we're going to do? A okay, name the substituents to give the smallest stock of numbers and list them into an alphabetical order, and then it will end on the word benzene. Okay, this is not styrene because it should be a double bond, no? Bromobenzene is not a special name. Aminobenzene is not a special name. Therefore, no, since there is no special name no, in this example or in this aromatic compound, therefore, what we are going to do is to name it by giving our substituents the lowest set of number and then arrange it into an alphabetical order. Okay? So if we're going to start here, this will be one, two, three, four. Now, sir, why don't we start here in bromo? If we start here in bromo, since this this one will be the first one, if we are going to arrange it, no? this will be one, two, three, four, five, six. No, it will give us one, three, six, which is higher. Okay, so might as well start at this one. One, two, three, four to give us two bromo, one ethyl, four nitro benzene. Again, take note. If one of the substituents impart a special name, then name the molecule as is, as the parent. And then the rest is just a derivative. If none of the substituents or substituents imparts a special name, then numbers the substituents to give the lowest set of number and then arrange them into alphabetical order. And then the final word is benzene. Again, remember this one, guys. In molecules containing functional groups, Phenol groups are often named as a substituent. Okay, so let's exercise. Let us name the following aromatic hydrocarbons. Okay. First things first, letter A. Do we have a parent or special name? Yes, we have special name. This one. This is our thulwit. So one, two, three. One, three, we can say that this is our one. Uh, this is our, sorry, 3 iodo tulwin. No? 3 iodo tulwin. Or simply, we can say it as our meta iodo tulwin. Okay? This is our meta iodo tulwin. Now, how about this one? Do we have a special name here? Yes. This is our benzoic acid. Now this is our benzoic acid. So this is carbon 1, carbon 2, carbon 3, 
four, five, six, or one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have five, three, five, three. So that is three, five, dibromo, benzoic acid. Okay. Now how about this one? Do we have a special name? Yes. This one is our aniline. Okay. So this is our 4-chloro aniline. Or simply, we can say that this is our para chloro aniline. Okay. Our para chloro aniline. Now another example. How about this one? Do we have a special name? Yes, we have. This is our special name, and this is our phenol. No? So if you're going to name it, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, what is this one? Remember that this is our tertiary butyl. So how are we going to name this? Okay, so we have on number two, number four, and number six. So this will be two, four, six. Okay, remember, there is three tertiary butyl tri hyphen third hyphen butyl phenol. Okay, again, this is our two four third uh, two four tri third butyl phenol. Now, how about this one? Do we have a common name or oh, special name? Yes, this is our special name. Now, this is aniline. So, that is our one, two, three, four, two, four, dichloroaniline. Okay. How about this one? Do we have a special name? Yes. This is our special name, benzoic acid. This is our attachment. So we have uh, meta nitro benzoic acid. Okay. Meta nitro benzoic acid or meta amino benzoic acid. Okay? So that is how we name our aromatic hydro compounds. Now we have what we call PAS. When we said PAS, they are polynuclear aromatic hydrocarbons. Okay? And that is a hydrocarbon that contains, okay, this is a hydrocarbon that contains two or more benzene. Okay, take note, it contains two or more benzene rings. Okay, each pair of rings share two adjacent carbon atoms. Okay, uh, share two adjacent carbon atoms. Now, example of PA is we have naphthalene. So, the active component of mothballs na nilalagay sa cabinet ng mga lola mo. Mabango. Okay? We also have here anthracene, phenactrine, and benzofirine. Okay? So, these are our principal or these are our polynuclear aromatic hydrocompounds or PAS. Uh, PA, I'm sorry, PA. That contains two or more benzene rings. Now, we have here the principal pa compound, so we have anthracene, phenatracine, no, phenylene, tetracine, tricine, uh, triphylene, pyrene, pentacine, benzoipyrene, coranuline, benzoferiline, chorine, ovaline, and ven, uh, benzofluorosine. Uh, okay? So these are our principal pas. Take note of this. No? Take note of this. Structures have a screenshot of these structures. Now, let's go to the reactions of benzene. Now, take note, guys, that uh, the reactions of benzene, the most noticeable reactions of benzene is what we call the aromatic substitution. And when we said aromatic substitution, no, uh, hydrogen of benzene is being replaced by halogens, net nitro group, and sulfonic acid. And this can be introduced directly into our benzene ring or into our ring. Okay, 
So number one, we have here halogen. Now, take note of this, guys. Take note of this. Chlorine and bromine, no? Chlorine and bromine do not react with benzene. Okay? Chlorine and bromine, take note, ha? Please listen very well. Chlorine and bromine do not react with bromine. In contrast to their intrastenous reactions with cyclohexene and other alkenes. But, there's a conjunction but. But, in the presence of an iron catalyst, no? in a presence of an iron catalyst, chlorine and bromine reacts rapidly with benzene. If chlorine reacts with benzene, it will give you chlorobenzene and hydrochloric acid. Okay, or hydrogen chloride. If bromine reacts with benzene, no, in the presence of uh, iron catalyst or ferric chloride, it will give us bromo benzene and hydrogen bromide. Now, in other words, if we don't have an iron catalyst, no, if we don't have, if we don't have iron catalyst, there is no reaction. Okay, remember, in the absence of iron catalyst, chlorine and bromine do not react with benzene. But in the presence of this iron catalyst, bromine and iron uh, bromine and chlorine reacts rapidly no? to have chlorobenzene or bromobenzene. Again, that is halogenation. Without this one, no reaction. Now, how about nitration? When you said nitration, no, this is an example of a uh, acid concentration no uh, we have here nitric acid and sulfuric acid now sulfuric acid here acts as uh, a catalyst no that enhances the reaction now take note when benzene is added no with uh, nitro nitric acid and sulfuric acid no the nitro group release or the nitro group from a nitric acid will replace the hydrogen of the benzene to give us your nitrobenzene. Again, take note. Now take note. This nitric acid will split into a OH and NO2. Okay. And this one will be replaced by our nitro group to give us nitrobenzene. And then hydroxyl plus the a uh, loose hydrogen will bond to give us water. In other words, no, the reaction of nitration will give us a nitrobenzene plus water. Okay. Now, another example here is we have this one. Para nitrobenzene, okay, plus water. You now, in the presence of nickel as a methyl catalyst and a pressure will give us four amino benzoic acid or para amino benzoic acid no which is a paba which is required by bacteria i take note that bacteria require uh, or requires para amino benzoic acid or paba for the synthesis of the folic acid which in turn required for the synthesis of a heterocyclic aromatic amine basis of nucleic acids. Okay, take note that although bacteria can synthesize folic acid from paraaminobenzoic acid, the folic acid is a vitamin for human and must be obtained from a diet. So this one shows a reaction of uh, nitration. Next is we have sulfonation. Now take note guys that Sulfonation, uh, so one of the best examples of sulfonation 
is for the production of benzene sulfonic uh, benzene sulfonic acid no which is for the preparation of detergent so like that's let's say, for, let's say for example we have here dodexyl benzene no plus our sulfuric acid and our uh, sodium hydroxide no and base no for uh, saponification no, will produce a sodium for dodexyl benzene sulfonate or sds which is an ionic detergent no an important component of detergent now we have here phenols no phenols the functional group of phenols is oh attached to our benzene okay so phenol is a derivative of our benzene okay so this is phenol this is 3 methyl phenol or metacresol this is 1 2 benzyl diol benzyl diol oh oh diol cathecol instead of saying 1 2 benzene diol we can say it as cathecol this is our 1 3 benzyl diol no instead of saying 1 3 benzyl diol we can say it as resocrenol this is our 1 4 benzene diol or instead of saying 1 4 benzene diol this is our hydroquinone okay now these are some of the phenols that can be found in the nature this one is our two okay this one is our two isoprofil 5 methyl phenol one two three four five two isoprofil 5 methyl phenol or instead of saying two isoprofil 5 methyl phenol that is our thymol and that is a important constituent of thyme yan yung mga nilalagay sa food okay how about this one this is our 4 hydroxy 3 methyl methoxy benzaldehyde okay so this is our uh, benzaldehyde and aldehyde 1 2 3 4 methoxy hydroxy 4 hydroxy 3 methoxy benzaldehyde or instead of saying that we can say that this is our vanillin, which is an important constituent of our vanilla beans. Yung mga vanilla or flavor. Okay? So this one naman is our urosol. Now what is this one? This is your IV poison or poison IV. No? Siya yung nakikita sa uh, mali, mali. poison IV. Poison IV. Now, poison IV causes a rash. No, uh, this rash is caused by an allergic reaction to the oily uh, resin of uh, the plant. No, this is a plant that causes poison uh, that contains the poison IV. No, that causes a poison IV, which causes a uh, rash. No, and that rash is caused by the urisol. The active component of this leaf. Now we have here capcaisin, no, that can be found in a various types of pepper. No, uh, I'm sorry, this is the active or the pungent principal form of the various species of peppers, such as we have capsicum and we have solanaceae. Sola, I'm sorry, Sola no say. Okay. Uh, these are the genus of peppers, ng mga paminta. Okay. And capcaisin is the active component or the pungent, the principal pungent of our pepper. And that is a phenol. No? That is a phenol. Now, reactions of our phenols includes the acidity of phenols. Now, take note, guys, that most of the phenols are weight acid with a pKa value of approximately 10. For example, this one, the pKa value is A, uh, 9.89. Okay. 
However, even though the uh, I want to take note of this, even though the phenols is considered a weaker base or a weaker acid rather, so it can react with strong bases. That's why uh, if it reacts with strong bases, it could be considered as a strong acid. This one is a strong base which, which reacts with phenol, no, which will give us a weaker salt. No? This is a sodium phenoxide, which is a salt, and this is considered as insoluble. No? Insoluble in water. Okay? So if it's sabihin, if this is insoluble in water, there is a precipitate no, in our suspension. Next one is oxidation. Now take note, guys, that oxidations are or oxidation of phenols uh, gives us a 1,4 benzene uh, diode that is a ketone. No, that is a ketone. Now take note, phenols are oxidized to quinones. Uh, by a variety of strong oxidizing agents. An example of strong oxidizing agent is this one, uh, potassium dichromate. Now, potassium dichromate in presence of sulfuric acid as an acid catalyst will give us paraquinone, which is an example of the oxidation reaction of phenols. Now, take note naman that Phenols can uh, reduce rapidly no, into a 1,4 benzene diol or hydroquinone. So this is our uh, paraquinone, no, a phenol, no, a phenol in reaction with uh, potassium dichromate, no, in re reaction with potassium dichromate. Sulfuric acid no, will give us paraquinone. No, this paraquinone no, uh, gain of hydrogen no, will give us 1,4 benzyl diol or hydroquinone. Now, phenols as an antioxidant. Okay, take note of this. Autooxidation, when you said autooxidation, that is a reaction that converts the RH group to our OOH group or what we call hydroperoxide. Okay, so let's say for example, this is, a, this is a section of the fatty acid of hydrocarbons. Now plus oxygen and light, no. Uh, this section no, will lose, no, will lose our uh, this one, will lose our hydrogen. Okay. This one will lose our hydrogen and will be replaced by our oxygen, no? A carbon uh, molecules of oxygen. And since this one requires uh, attachment, the loose hydrogen will be bonded to this oxygen, which will give us a hydroperoxide. Okay. So this is what we call a carbon radical now this is our carbon radical where our ooh will attach so it will give us a hydroperoxide okay. when we said radical okay when we said radical it is in an atom of molecule with unpaired electron since there is an unpaired electron, no, the oxygen in the presence of heat and light will attach on it and the hydrogen will attach to our oxygen. Now, this is the steps in the propagation of our carbon radical. Okay. So again, this is our uh, radical and this is our oxygen diradical. So this one will attach to this one so that it will give us a hydroxy or hydroperoxy radical. We still have here a radical which needs a, a hydrogen. No? Now, a new section of a fatty acid will remove an hydrogen, will lose an hydrogen to give or to attach to this uh, hydrox, uh, hydroperoxide 
or peroxy radical at one, and once this hydrogen attach to the propagation we will have a hydrox uh, hydroperoxide and we'll have a new carbon radical and then oxygen plus hydrogen will attach and the cycle continues okay so that is the action of phenols as an antioxidant okay now take note of this hydroperoxides are unstable under biological conditions they are degraded to short chain aldehydes and carboxylic acid with unpleasant rancid smell similar formation of hydroperoxide in low density lipoproteins deposited in the walls of the arteries which leads into cardiovascular disease in humans in addition many effects of aging are true the best result of the formation of their subsequent degradation okay so this is an example of an antioxidant take note guys that vitamin e is our natural antioxidant okay this one is our vitamin e which contains phenol and that is our natural antioxidant now we have bht and bha which are synthetic antioxidants okay? they are found are uh, these compounds are radical scavengers and they are stable radicals thus break the cycle of chain of propagation steps they prevent the further formation of destructive hydroperoxides okay so thank you and i hope that you enjoy listening